and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. So we pray. Grant us your light, O Lord, that the darkness in our hearts being wholly passed away, we may come at last to the light which is Christ. For Christ is a morning star, who when the night of this world has passed, brings to his saints the promised light of life and opens to them eternal day. Amen. We sing together hymn number 486 of the Father's Love Begotten.
the blessing of the light. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, eternal creator of light and darkness. In this season of Advent, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory, made flesh and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through the outpouring of his Spirit, you open our blindness to the glory of his presence. Strengthen us in our weakness. Support us in our stumbling efforts to do your will. And free our tongues to sing your praise. For to you all honour and blessing are due, now and forever. Amen. The choir are now going to sing Hail Gladdening Light. Please sing. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We now stand to sing hymn number 480, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Sorry? Sorry, 282. I, I missed my line. 282.
Angels of the North rejoice, echo. sit for our next reading. The prophet Isaiah tells many times of the coming of this promised king, but in this passage he tells that this will be a king like no other, and his reign will be one of justice and gentleness. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord.
we now stand to sing hymn number 480, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. next reading. At the beginning of Mark's Gospel, we are reminded of how God would send a messenger to prepare the way for the Messiah, and then we hear of John the Baptist's proclamation. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. We stand now to sing hymn number 263, Hark, a Herald Voice is Calling. The birth of Jesus takes place through the work of the Holy Spirit. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, 
planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, and, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. While now sing, this is the truth sent from above. This reading is from the Blickling Homilies, a collection of ancient Anglo-Saxon sermons. This one, this extract, is entitled, Christ the Golden Blossom. My dear people, once again let us consider the noble advent of our Lord and how he himself made intercession for us while in this world. Him the patriarchs intimated, the prophets told, and the psalmists sang, declaring how he would come from the glorious throne of his heavenly kingdom to possess for himself the kingdoms of men. All this was fulfilled when the heavens opened and God's supreme power descended upon earth, and the Holy Spirit dwelt within the noble womb, the choice treasury of the Holy Mother, for a full nine months. Then the Queen of all virgins gave birth to the true creator and comforter of all people, the saviour of the world and helper of souls. The golden blossom came into this world and received a human body from the Holy Virgin Mary. Through this birth, we were saved and redeemed. And through this union of God and man, we were freed from the grasp of the devil. Through the advent of Christ, we were honoured, enriched and endowed. For Christ lives and reigns with all holy souls forever. We stand to sing hymn number 406, 
long ago prophets knew. After love comes down, is come in, come among us. Lord, you are ever among us. Open our eyes to your presence, that your church may be true to its mission, that each congregation may proclaim your goodness that all of us may show forth your glory. Lord, come down, come in, come among us. To the nations that are looking for freedom, to the peoples that are longing for liberty, to the individuals striving for justice, to all who are seeking to improve the world, to all who are seeking to improve themselves. Lord, come down, come in, come among us. To our homes, as we prepare for your coming, to our loved ones, as they reveal to us your love, to our work, that it may show forth your presence into our leisure and into our pleasures. Lord, come down, come in, come among us. 
to all who long for release, to all who cry in pain, to the sick in body, in mind, and in spirit, to those who can no longer cope, to all who are oppressed and in darkness, to all who watch and wait and weep for you. Lord, come down, come in, come among us. That we may know that life is eternal, that loved ones departed are in your keeping, that we may rejoice in hope, that we may come to your glory. Lord, come down, come in, come among us. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the collect for the first Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, may we rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The choir are now going to sing Wake, Awake, with Tidings Thrilling.
for our blessing, I'd just like to remind you that our special services for Advent continue next week when, in addition to our morning communion at 10.30, at four in the afternoon, we have the Chris Tingle service. So that's our Chris Tingle service at four next Sunday. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. We conclude looking towards the coming of God's kingdom by singing hymn number 449, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord.